carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Thank you. It's good to see all of you here. What images come to your mind when you hear the word family? Think about that. Is it a big family reunion? Could it be playing at the park? Or could it be hugs going across the room on Christmas Day? Now what about when you hear the word church? Could it be hugs with your dear Christian brothers and sisters? Or could it be a church picnic at the park? Or is it gathering around the Lord's table in communion? Did your thoughts relate to each other? Is the church your family? Or is the church just an added activity which can easily be lifted out of life and pushed aside? I have recently become aware of a problem that has grown over the past few decades, and it really concerns me. According to a study that was done by Lifeway Research, as of 2007, only 70% of adults no longer regularly attended church. Now, that same study was done in 2017, and that number decreased to 66%. While that number is lower than the 2007 study, it is still very startling the amount of young adults that leave the church. There is a worrying trend of more and more young adults leaving the church. How many of you know someone who's left the church? I do. A family that my family used to be extremely close to has sadly drifted away, and it is very heartbreaking. Why are so many young Christians and young adults leaving the faith? I've noticed a few issues. The first issue I've observed is the idea of individualism. There's this idea of you do you, but don't hurt me. That view is widely shared all throughout society and has slowly crept its way into the church. We've let mainstream ideas infiltrate the church. And if we're not careful in our own study of the Bible, we may interpret the Bible wrongly. Whose voices are we really listening to as we study the Bible? In many places, the idea of community within the church has been lost. It is important to meet together as a body of believers, as it says in Hebrews 10, verse 24 through 25, which says, And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. In this day and age of social media, there can be tendencies of increasing selfish thoughts and actions. And every year, more and more people feel increasingly alone and isolated, and depression is on the rise. We should be taking more time to build up one another in faith, as is stated in Galatians 6, verse 2, which says, Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. There is a certain amount of individual study that is important, as mentioned in Philippians 2, verse 12, which says, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Taking the time to read and study the Bible and praying to God is very, very important. But the community of believers is also very important to our faith as well. Another possible reason I see is the lack of spiritual mentors. In Colossians 3, verse 16, it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Many people probably do not think about looking for spiritual mentors. It's easy to get caught up in our lives that we do not take the time to listen this comes back to the idea of community. Having spiritual mentors can really help in our spiritual walk. A really close mentor of mine put it this way. Take a four to one ratio. You have four mentors for every one student. That is the ideal situation, but I know everyone's lives go all in various directions. But it is important that you surround yourself with spiritual mentors who can push you in the right direction spiritually. 
Paul in Titus 2 wrote about older men and older women teaching and training the younger generations. It says, You, however, must teach what is appropriate to sound doctrine. Teach the older men to be temperate, worthy of respect, self-control, and in sound faith, in love, and in endurance. Likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanders or addicted to too much wine, but to teach what is good. Then they can urge the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind, and to be subject to their husbands, so that no one will malign the word of God. Similarly, encourage the young men to be self-controlled. In everything, set them an example by doing what is good. In your teaching, show integrity, seriousness, and soundness of speech that cannot be condemned, so that those who oppose you may be ashamed because they have nothing bad to say about us. Even we younger people can be an encouragement to the even younger kids. We can all get in there and take in some mentoring relationships. I sure am grateful for all the mentors I've had over the years. A third reason I see are the claims that there are just too many rules to follow. Many young adults will read the Bible and see only commands of what we can't do. God gives us certain commands on how to as a guide on how to live our best lives for him. He never meant for them to be a burden. The Bible says in Romans 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and and fall short of the glory of God. Thank God that he sent his one and only son to come down to earth and die for our sins. If that had never happened, we would all be doomed because like in the verse in Romans, we all sin. And after we sin, God helps us up and we go on our lives, living every moment for him. In 1 John 1, verse 7, it reads, But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus' his Son purifies us from sin. While God does forgive our sins, we still have to remain in the light and be close to God while fellowshipping with one another. As it also says further on in 1 John, God is faithful to forgive. The final reason I see many young adults leave the church is the little desire to commit their lives to the Christian faith. We get so caught up in our lives that we put off our Bible reading and we put off our time with God. Well, I'm here to tell you that you are never too busy for God. In 1 John 3 verse 1 it says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is because it did not know him. God always wants to hear from his children, which is stated in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17, pray without ceasing. God does not care how busy your life is. He might even slow it down at times. He's certainly done that to my family. So make time for God just five to 10 minutes a day, it will definitely do a lot of good. Now back to my questions at the beginning. What do you see when you hear the word family? What do you see when you hear the word church? Well, I'll tell you what I see. I see a strong, close-knit community ready to help anyone's needs. In Acts 2, verse 44 through 47, it reads, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone has filled, was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to the number daily those who were being saved. Also in Romans 12, verse 10 through 13, it reads, Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourself. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need, practicing hospitality. Some examples of a close-knit community could be coming together as a family when urgent needs arise for various families. 
and the church gathers around those people. There were a couple of different instances when the church came together and helped my family when we had other needs. Other examples include small groups, <clears throat> meeting in each other's homes, and sharing prayer needs as well as physical needs. Never, ever be ashamed to ask your church for help. It's what we're all here for. Another thing I see is I see mentors ready to teach. The body, the church is a body of believers, not just an activity we do once or twice a week. We are a family, all adopted sons and daughters. Take time to build close friendships with young or with old. Find people you trust who can give you solid Christian advice. A great mentor is someone who genuinely cares about you and wants to see you grow and succeed in your Christian walk. Paul is a great example of this. He was a great mentor to Timothy and Titus. At least Timothy was likely a teenager when he met Paul. Timothy, under Paul's leadership, became a great leader and teacher in Ephesus. I've seen Mesa greatly embodied all these ideas. Now, to my fellow seniors, life has been extremely tough on us. Most of our school year was taken away. Many of us have lost so much, homes, jobs, and loved ones. We've had a pandemic grip the world and slow things to a literal halt. Don't let what has happened discourage you from God. He's been there this whole time. Don't let what has happened pull you away from our faith in God. So I challenge us graduates and us fellow younger peers. Do not be a part of that 66% of young adults who fall away. Be the exception. Find a solid, firm church community. Find good spiritual mentors. As Hebrews 10 verse 23 says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Hold fast to your faith. Do not let it go. Thank you. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may um, be sons, in, sons of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Or are not even the tax collectors doing that? If you greet only your brothers, what are you doing more than others? Do not even the pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Well, I think everyone knows me already. <laughs> uh, um, okay, um, it, is, it is good to see, it is, it is good to see everyone here now, and it, is, and it is my great honor and pleasure to come here and, and, and preach to you guys. Um, so let's, let's start. There was once a software student in, 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 in high school who would go to class and who would go to school and do his work in class. He would get along with, 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 with everybody except for one student who, 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 who envied him at school. The, 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 that student w was made fun of in front of his, in front of the bully's friends, even worse, in front of the whole class. Not, not only what was he made made fun of for for being a nerd in school, but of who he really was. That 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 student felt sad. He, he felt that th this war be, be, between him and the bully would never end. But but he managed to to stay strong and, and carry on with, with with school, and 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 did not let anyone bring him down. It 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 haunted him for the for, for the remaining for, for for the remaining five months of the school year, until one day, the bully was was going through trouble with his history class. Um, the the a teacher told him that th that if he did not turn in his assignments by the end by the end of the day he was going to fail and retake the the class. L later during the day the bully went to the student who he bullied 
and asked him for help in his assignments. The, the, the student who, who, who was bullied greatly helped him by, 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 giving, him, by giving him his assignments so far that, so far, so far that he can copy from him, but with one condition, to write it in his own words. The, the, the bully was amazed and, 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 and was thankful for, 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 for that student that, 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 that helped him despite how he mistreated him. Later that week, the bully and, 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 and the student became friends. That, 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 that software student was me. I was picked on. I made fun of. I made, it made me go through a rough ride. It was one of the darkest moments of my life. It was hard not to, it, it, it was hard, you know, um, like, uh, like not, it, it was hard not, not to use violence in those situations. And all I was wishing, it was for the school year to end be, because I was like, I'm done with this kid already, you know? And so, it, and, and, and it was that serious though. Um, and, and, um, and yeah, like I told my parents about it and my dad said, well, why not try converting it into a joke? So, and I used his strategy once uh, and he tells me, okay, because like if you try to, 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 to come up with, with a comeback, that indicates them that 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 you are mad and and they will try to keep it that way and so i said oh okay and there was one time where i used to go to speech back in my sophomore year and and he would tell me and, and the bully would 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 tell me hey uh, hey uh, you're up now for 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 speech and then i said are, are you a witch? Because how do you know? <laughs> I, I think he took the joke a little too seriously and he got mad. Like, uh, I, was like I was like, oh, snap. And the whole class slap, which I was like, I was like, you know. But, um, and so, but, to, but to, today I want to talk about how God w wants us to be or, or and to, to fight back against our enemies. L let's go to M Matthew chapter five, verses 43 through 48. It says, you, you have heard through 45, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, you have heard that it was said, love, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But, but, but I tell you, love, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be children of your Father in heaven. Um, another passage that I want to, uh, another passage that, that, that I want to go into is Luke chapter 6, verses 35 through, through 36. It says, but love your enemies, do, do, good to, to, do, do good to them, and lend them what, without ex expecting anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Um, we, a third passage that, that, that I want to look at is um, First Peter chapter three, verse nine, it says, do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, re re repay evil with, with, with b b blessing because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. So according to these uh, three, 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 three scriptures, God wants us to repay evil with good and not with bad. You know, um, being, uh, and I say this because how are we 
representing Christ? How are we being the light in this world? And even how are, are, are we sharing the love of Jesus if we act like the, like, like the world does? Um, but, we were, but we were meant to be different than the, the, the world. Uh, an additional way, uh, an additional, uh, oh, like, uh, well, well, I know that, well, I know that it will be di- difficult at times, but we need to do it be- because that's what God tells us to, to do. And if we do it his way, the blessings and the rewards will, will come. An additional way how God wants us to be with our with our enemies is to is to stay calm and not fear and do what it say and do what He says. In Exodus chapter twenty three verse twenty two, it it says, "If you l- listen ca- carefully to to what He says and do all that I say, I will be an enemy to your enemies." And I will oppose those who oppose you. My, 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 my brothers and sisters, this d- demonstrates that we should do what God says and not fear because he will take care of the rest. Yes, th- there, will, there will come a time where, where, where we will get mad at, at, at someone and, and want to do something back to them. But... God is saying, bro, like, uh, and God is saying, hey, I got you, bro, like, like, you're gonna, like, chill. I'm... <laughs> and he's like, and he's like, I'll take care of that. But, but my, but what, what, but what, what an awesome God that, that we have, that, 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 that he will fight for us. Um, in, in conclusion, as hard as it can be, Let's repay evil with good. So, and, and, and that way, so that way we are showing who, um, who we are as God's people. And we will receive the blessings and the rewards from, from, from our God. Just as I had the blessing to see the change from, from, an, from an enemy to a friend by doing it God's way. And also, and, and lastly, Let's be calm and do what God says when the, when, when the enemy attacks because the battle belongs to the Lord. Well, thank you for le- le- letting me um, share my thoughts with you guys. If, if, if you guys are in need of prayer, um, I, I, I greatly encourage you. Our, our, our elders will be more than happy to pray for you and also as well as a church. Thank you, and God bless each and every single one of you. Oh God.